President Biden's Homeland Security Secretary told lawmakers on Capitol Hill the situation on the southern border is difficult, but he would not call it a crisis. His comments came as U.S. Customs and the Border Patrol are dealing with a huge influx of immigrants, far more than a year ago, though it's still less than the peak levels of 2019. Maria Villarreal visited some of them who have been waiting for months to plead their case. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. Right now, the Biden administration is slowly starting to let thousands of asylum seekers into the U.S. to wait for their hearing. That's a big change from the Trump era, where they were forced to remain in Mexico. And yet still, a lot of people are stuck across the border right now, waiting. They have told us that they are in squalor conditions. In fact, we went over the border for, to see firsthand exactly what they are dealing with as they wait out their cases. My dad was a drug dealer. My oldest brother was a drug dealer. A reformed gang member turned ordained minister. Abraham Barbary crosses daily from Brownsville, Texas into Matamoros, Mexico, where he opened a Bible school and hip hop church. In between the songs, we would, you know, share the good news, share the gospel. In the last year, this father of four helped minister to thousands of migrants living in this makeshift camp near the international border. This was video taken three weeks ago outside the camp. And this is what it looks like today. It's been abandoned. Most of the migrants waiting here were allowed to cross into the U.S. to start the asylum process. But nearly 60 were left behind with nowhere to go when the camp was shut down by the Mexican government. We were just waiting for those 56 asylum seekers to cross the border and, and close the, the shelter because this is it's just a temporary shelter. But people started coming, you know, into Matamoros and people who were already here and they just came and we just couldn't, you know, say no. This is actually a church school that has now been converted into a shelter for migrants. Have a lot of people from a lot of different areas. Uh, one thing they have in common is they, they want to be able to have their chance to go into the U.S., ask for asylum. Ivan. Ivan. Su amiga? So she said that's where she sleeps and her friend Ivana sleeps there. School rooms are now bedrooms and this parking lot is now a part-time playground. Everyone is hoping to explain why they deserve a chance at requesting asylum in the United States. They say it's confusing. They want at least to be able to tell their story to someone in the government. And they're very frustrated because nobody is listening. I mean, their level of desperation is at an all-time high. When it comes to what's happening across the border, the influx of immigration or immigrants, is there an end in sight? I don't, I don't think so, at least not for now. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to increase because right now the people in South America, Central America, uh, in South of Mexico, for some reason they think that the borders are going to be open. Resources and money are exhausted in Mexico, and the government has little incentive to help the U.S. care for these migrants anymore. Do you think that the Mexican federal government wants to help these people? I, I don't think so. I, I really honestly think that because of these three years of very intense immigration processes and dialogues, I think that the Mexican government is tired of it. Do you feel like it's your duty to do this? So, as a Christian, to me, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? I'm just doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing. So we met groups from Cuba, Latin America, even an indigenous group from Chiapas, Mexico, who told me they were fleeing cartel violence. Right now, we do understand that more asylum seekers will be allowed to come through this port of entry in Hidalgo, Texas, but the process will be very slow. And these people are very tired of waiting. Tony? You can understand why, Maria. Thank you very much.